My name is Chandler Slavin. I am the Sustainability Coordinator at DoorDam Manufacturing, and unfortunately I can't be there with you today as I am at Pack Expo in Las Vegas. Nonetheless, I have been invited to speak to you about my research on PET thermal form recycling, past, present, and future. So a little background about me. I joined the family firm in 2009 uh, when I quickly discovered that contrary to popular belief, PET clamshells, uh, like those DoorDay manufacturers, are not recyclable uh, insofar as 60% or more American communities don't have access to the facilities that can recycle them. Um, from that point on, I began researching PET thermal form recycling. Uh, I was asked to be the co-lead of Walmart Canada's PET subcommittee, uh, which worked with stakeholders to increase the amount of PET recovered. Uh, in 2010, I published a recycling report, uh, The Truth About Blister Clamshell Recycling, where I outlined some obstacles that need to be overcome. In order to understand how far we've come, we should first understand where we've been. In 2010, clamshells were not recyclable. I posed the following inquiry. If we manufacture our containers out of curbside collected bottles, why can't we recycle them together? Uh, cited barriers to post-consumer PET recycling include the following. Uh, collection, the chicken and the egg, uh, reprocessing, there were concerns over differences in IV, labels, the way it moves down the line, and then issues and concerns over end markets insofar as international demand versus domestic consumption. Industry activist group NAPCOR explains the supply issue as follows. The U.S. now has the capacity to process more post-consumer PET packaging than collected. That means that in 2012, even if no bales are exported, these reclamation assets will be short of material. Investments in these assets are substantial and arguably the most sophisticated in the world. Without reclamation plants, there is no PET recycling, and these new plants are essential if a respectable PET recycling rate is to be achieved. But without additional collection efforts or new streams of material, the increased capacity will only serve to drive prices to unsustainable levels. And what is a potential solution to the supply issue? Why recycle thermoforms? But of course, since 2009, it has been widely recognized that adding PET thermoforms to the bottle recycling stream would increase the amount of material available for recycling, hence aid in achieving a more sustainable model for PET recycling. Uh, consequently, working groups along the supply chain have sprung to action, tackling everything from issues of contamination to issues of supply. These efforts have been far-reaching, and the progress in recycling PET thermoform containers tremendous. NAPCOR reports the progress in PET thermoform recycling as follows. 2011 saw the first significant amount of PET thermoform packaging moving through the system in both the U.S. and Canada. Since 2009, NAPCOR has made the removal of obstacles to PET thermoform recycling its top priority as a way of increasing feedstock opportunities for reclaimers and ultimately ensuring more RPET flake and pellet supply to end users. These efforts are bearing fruit as all purchasers and processors of curbside bales are allowing some level of thermoforms mixed in with the bottles. In the short term, increased PET thermoform collection is the best hope of addressing the key issue of increasing supply. So here we are. We've arrived at the modern-day state of post-consumer PET thermoform recycling, with the majority of American communities now accepting all non-bottle ridges for recycling and the technical barriers to post-consumer PET thermoform recycling being resolved, the floodgates to PET thermoform recycling are nearly ready to be opened. While the implication of China's green fence are yet to manifest in the PET reclamation market, all signs point to a stable increase in collection and recycling in order to add to the amount of material available to secondary markets. So, will recycling PET thermoforms be the silver bullet to cementing a sustainable PET recycling market? Moreover, will we ever arrive at a reality where retailer preference for post-consumer PET packaging sends a signal to municipalities to collect more post-consumer PET from their communities? Recent discussions with PET stakeholders have led me to conclude that there are three prevailing perspectives about the likelihood of creating a market-driven and sustainable PET recycling market. There are those who believe it's completely possible. Uh, all that's required is some consumer education and best-in-class design and recovery processes. Then there are those who believe it is possible with limited governmental intervention aimed at incentivizing collection and recycling, like landfill bans or bottle deposit legislation. And then there are those who believe it is not possible to develop a market-driven PET recycling market independent of public policy 
and that the cost of recycling will always be a cost. The question now must become, whose cost? 